Dear student, today we will talk about what is a transportation problem in linear programming. So in the transportation problem, we always go for minimum cost. Why? Because when we transfer a product from one place to another, so there are two kind of costs, the cost of the product itself and the cost of the transportation, right? So we always try to minimize the cost as much as possible. So as we know, the Chinese are very like, you know, popular in the transportation and in supply chain. So they try to minimize the cost by sending their products from Chinese to the rest of the world, right? So a similar model has been adopted by Amazon and uh, AliExpress as well, right? So this is a very interesting field and people are working a lot to minimize the cost, right? So here you can see there are like, you know, two most important ingredients in that one. That is first is called supply location from where you will supply your products. For example, it could be chair, it could be air condition, it could be uh, home devices or home appliances. It could be like, you know, utensils, any, any products you can, you can like supply. And demand means where it is demanded, in which country, in which city, in which place it is demanded, right? So that is like, you know, uh, the, the topic of today. So here then we have, uh, for example, let's suppose if you want to uh, transfer the product, if you want to shift the products from, let's suppose, uh, from Boston to the distribution center one, or from Boston to distribution center two, the cost would be six. From Boston to distribution center three, the, the cost of transportation would be four dollars. And the total supply which is needed is 300, like, you know, a supply which is which uh, a distribution center can provide is 300. For Toronto, it could be like, you know, six dollar uh, for distribution center one. From Toronto to distribution center two, it is three. From Toronto to distribution center three is seven, right? And the sub maximum supply which it can do it is 500 chairs or tables or any appliances, right? The demand is for uh, from distribution center is 200. For distribution center two is 300, and distribution center three is 250, right? So this is like you know total statistics uh, which is needed, and this is very interesting. Uh, matrix or table which provides you the information so let's uh, let's see that how can we draw it in a in a shape of a diagram uh, we call like like this diagram as like a, it's consists of arcs the arrows are called arcs so it is originating from Boston to the distribution center one two three instead of Boston you can also specify some other countries names like or city names like Bahrain or you can say from Qatar or Saudi Arabia or any any like you know uh, suppliers could be there right like for example for ikea the, the good supplier are sweden sweden uh, are are supplying all over the world the ikea products right so you can put any like you know uh, supplier here according to the products so and the distribution center name also you can keep it so let's suppose so in the arrows direction is from supplier to the demand you can see over here so the the supplier to the demand is uh, uh, is uh, is there and in that one, you can see over here on the arrow, we put like the cost of the transportation. So $5, $6, $5, $4, and from to DC one, $6, $3, and $7, right? So that has been done. Now, since our main objective is to have an objective function and constraint. So because in linear programming, we always look for uh, objective function and constraint. So how can we draw it and how can we formulate it? So there is a very small trick over here. For example, we say x is a variable and x is a variable which is from Boston for B and to distribute it center 1. So we say x b1, right? That is x b1 is from Boston to distribution center 1. Second is from Boston to distribution center 2, b2. Third is from Boston to distribution center 3. The, the another uh, second variable is about Toronto. Uh, the, so x t1 from the, uh, Toronto to distribution center 1. Toronto to distribution center two and Toronto to distribution center three, right? So why the two plus three is six? Two multiplied by three is six because we have a two supplies and we have three like you know demand. So we just multiply it so we get six six variable, right? Because in the objective function there would be six variable. You just need to add them these variable, right? So if you add them all these variable, that would be the z function. Okay. Now in this one. You can see the z function all the variables are there so 
but with each variable you need to multiply the cost of of the transportation for example from boston to distribution center the the transportation cost is five okay or from from boston to the distribution center two is six right so you need to multiply the the cost with that one okay above you can see for example for uh, for example from boston they are preparing the chairs and they are selling the chairs so let's suppose each chair price is uh, twenty dollars right so if you want to the product uh, price by itself as well you need to add them up so it becomes 20 plus 5 25 20 plus 6 6 and 20 plus 4 is 4 24 right let's suppose uh, the toronto center they supply uh, tables right so the price of the table is 18 and the cost of transportation is 6 so you just add them up so 18 plus 6 okay so 18 plus 6 how much 24 18 plus 3 uh, which is 21 and 18 plus 7 which is 25 right so you just like you know you can write the uh, the equation like likewise okay now uh, then we need to write the constraint right as this objective function is clear we have done this objective function and then we write subject to so in the subject to we have how many constraint we have it it depends on the number of arrows okay so you see over here uh, the first one is number of arrows is for example xb1 plus xb2 plus xb3 right or the table you can if you look at the table so supply so supply is 300 so less than and equal to 300 right so you have to look at the uh, supply uh, column okay and the second one is 500 you see over here the second is 500 right so supply is there now for the demand so we need like you know uh, because there are two variables for supply so there will be two equation for supply there are three variables for demand there will be three equation for the demand right now you see for like uh, for example if you see over here from uh, both the xb1 plus xt1 okay so how much is the is the is the demand you see over here the demand is 200 because here is b and t together boost and n to enter demand together right so that's why we you, you see two different variables and similarly for xb2 plus xt3 so here you see you see this row right this 200 300 and 250 so you have like you know three of three constraints over here and the last one is a non-negativity constraint as you already know that so all the variable must be equal to must be equal and greater than zero and simply if you want to make a shorthand so instead of all this one two three you just put i and instead of for the for the for the book for the toronto you you put j so i is for the for uh, uh, for uh, supply and j is for the demand right and equal and greater than zero okay uh, so this is like you know a balanced equation because when so here supply is like you know more supply is for example 800 uh, supply and the demand is approximately 750 right so supply is more and so there is no need for like you know uh, dummy variable but in case if it is opposite like this one okay so in this one if here if you see over here demand is more demand is for example 300 plus 300 600 7 8 850 right so the demand is higher while supply is 800 so so theoretically we add some demi uh, variable so which is called d1 okay so that is the demi variable and the demi variable is a very interesting one so in the demi variable we just 50 physically it does not exist right but theoretically in the diagram we just write because you see over here zero 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 so there is no like you know supply but just to balance the equation we write that we'll see here in the in the objective function you see the x d1 is we multiply zero because it is not supplying any chair or stable right x d2 is also zero and x d3 is also zero right so that is that is the main important thing so here now but just to balance the equation uh, instead of like you know 200 we write like you know 300 and the equation is uh, balanced over there right so this is the way that how we can like introduce the dummy variable when demand is higher and supply is lower right so i hope you understand the concepts of a transportation that how you can uh, how you can like you know from the table you draw the diagram and from the diagram you draw the objective function and constraint so see you in the next video thank you